I never fucked anybody over in my life, didn't have a comment. You got that? All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them up for no one. You understand? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I work for Kaiser Chose. So I'm bringing you this special edition episode this week because uh, some interesting things happened. You know, we did Fantastic Four last week, and I initially said that I wasn't going to watch the 1994 version because I didn't know where it was at. Um, or whatever the case may be. A friend sent me a link, and even then I was like, you know, I, I don't have time, you know. Um, but then earlier this week I found out that the documentary on the movie was being released. And if you know anything about me, you probably know that I don't like special features on, on movies. Um, I don't like behind-the-scenes stuff like that. It kind of takes me out of it. But what I do really like are documentaries on movies, whether um, the movie was successful or released or not. This particular one is called Doomed, the untold story of the Fantastic Four movie. Other good ones are Lost Soul, which is about the island of Dr. Moreau. The Death of Superman Lives, the story of the Tim Burton one. Overnight, which is about the uh, Boondock Saints. And there's even actually some really good candid ones on the original Batman DVD release. So the four of those, are, it's like split up, so that's a good one too. Um, so I wanted, to, I wanted to watch that, and then I figured why not go back and see that movie that this documentary is talking about. Now the, the version I watched was on YouTube, just like everyone else. It's a bootleg version. I don't know... It, the images I was I was googling show a, a better quality one so the one I had looked like it was a copy of a copy of a copy and then it sat on someone's shelf for five years and then it was watched 300 times and then it sat again it was very washed out and and hard to to tell what was going on half the time but it was still interesting to see I didn't have quite the reaction I was looking for I thought that this movie was gonna be just utter shit and it's really not that bad um, it looks like uh, a, a TV show or an episode of the, the Flash from before the one that's on the CW right now. Kind of some things that I noticed, some similarities to the new movies is they do name the team. You know, when they, they first go and get John and, and Susan, they, the mom's like, oh, look at you, the Fantastic Four. And I'm just, I kind of rolled my eyes because I thought that was funny. Well, it's not a good movie, I guess. Some of the things that did kind of stand out to me were the effects aren't bad. Um, if you watch the documentary, um, they kind of go into a portion of the the, doc, uh, the visual effects itself. But, you know, um, they're not too, too bad. You might laugh at it, but, like, the thing that really stood out to me is the Thing costume. I thought that that was beyond what... It was better than it had any right to be. And really, they should have used that same look for the the 2004 version or whatever. And there are some bad parts of this, too. Like, the person that plays the thing's girlfriend is, like, the worst blind actress I've ever seen. Not that she is blind, but she's playing a blind person very poorly. Uh, Dr. Doom's movements, which are uh, actually addressed in the documentary, are very animated, and they're not... Like that, that kind of threw me out of it. Like his his hand animations and things like that. And plus, they give it sound effects when he's doing it. So it just that made me laugh. And if you've seen it, there's a part at the end where Sue and Reed get married, and they're driving off in the limo, and this terrible <laughs> stretchy hand sticks his out of the uh, the sunroof of the limo and waves at everyone. That's a comical moment right there. So one of the things that first popped into my head when I'm watching this version is if it's an Ashcan copy, which means like they made it just to 
retain the rights like why go through all this trouble for visual effects and editing and music and and things like this um and i'm wondering this through while watching the actual movie and the documentary tackles that it answered really all of my questions that i had so going into this when they're making this movie the cast and crew had no idea what was going to happen i don't think they would have put in the time and the effort if they knew this i don't think anyone would have really they were told it was going to be shown in theaters they even did promotion for it they were going out to comic cons and events and things like this promoting the movie there was even a trailer made that they showed in movie theaters and so if you're familiar with Roger Corman, he makes very low-budget movies. That's why they went to him for this movie. And one of them that he made was called Carnosaur, which was meant to take advantage of Jurassic Park's success, which, as a little kid, like that was one of the movies I watched the most, Jurassic Park 2, but I'm talking about uh, Carnosaur. And they actually had a trailer attached to the VHS of that, so I'm kind of curious if I've ever seen the trailer for this movie um i'm gonna try to get my hands on a, a cop a vhs copy of carnosaur and then uh then i'll try to find a vhs player to play it on to see and this the, the 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 events of this movie and the what's going on with its release and things like that kind of reinforces my idea that i mentioned in the original fantastic four podcast that no one sets out to make a bad movie You do the best you can with what you got, and that's definitely what these people did. It's actually a very interesting documentary. It will, from what I can tell, I I rented it on uh, Vudu. You can rent it on Amazon, different digital retailers like that. Um, But from what I can tell, it's going to be released the day that you're listening to this, so Tuesday um, on DVD and Blu-ray it looks like. So I recommend that you go and, and just check it out. Even if you're not a fan of the Fantastic Four, it's a great documentary about, you know, just what these people went through. And that you're, I would almost guarantee that your your knowledge of the story will change. I thought they everyone knew what was going on. That's why when I put it on, I was like, why do they go through the trouble of this if they're not going to do it? I personally believe after watching this that even the producer who owned the rights to the Fantastic Four had no idea when he started this what was going to happen. They knew that they were making, a, or at least the producer did, making a movie just to hold on to the rights. But they had intended to release it. It sounds like once then Marvel executive Avi Arad knew about it, he put the kibosh on it, he bought it, and according to him, uh, bought the copies and burned everything. So I don't think, and if that is true, then... There's really, you know, the the bootleg copies are the best you're going to get. Even though the story is well known, you know, when they start going into the real reasons of it, there's still a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors or cloak and dagger or whatever going on behind the scenes. And it's kind of a sad story, really. But I don't remember who said it. Everyone kind of had the same idea going into it. But one of them specifically said, that this movie's probably reached more people in this current situation than it would have if it had been theatrically released. So they're looking at it like, yeah, it's kind of a bummer that we made this movie that no one's ever going to see, but we had fun doing it. Uh, We don't regret it by any means, and they've kind of become little celebrities off of it to begin with. So I encourage you to go check it out. Again, it's called Doomed. There's also an article that kind of inspired it called Fantastic Foe, F-A-U-X. You can Google that and read that article. They're both great little insights into uh, the nature of Hollywood sometimes. I thank you for tuning in to this special edition episode of Fantastic Four. Next week, I'll give you a little tease. We're going to do Sherlock Holmes, I believe. So... Uh, I thank you for listening. I know that there are plenty of choices out there, and I thank you for choosing this one. Until next week, that's a wrap. Mr. Brown, I think we're too close to Mr. Shit. Are you the police? No, man. We're musicians. I work for Kaiser Soldier. That's what he's waiting. No, man. I work for Kaiser Soldier. That's what he's waiting. No, man.